What's up everybody, it's Joel Lapuma. We are back with another episode of DIY Complex Closets. This time we feature multi-platinum rapper, g -Eazy. GZ has a new album called Everything Strange Here and his closet is full of sneaker grills. Tells a lot of great stories and shows off a lot of heat. Check it out. This is Young Gerald, g Easy, and I'm about to run through my sneaker collection with complex closets. Here we go. My earliest memory of building my collection, I mean, gosh, it goes back to, I think, in, in kindergarten, and my mom, we were at like a Goodwill, and there was actually some Concord, some 11s at Goodwill, and that was my first time like having a pair of Jordans. I just was drawn to like to cool sneakers. My favorite sneaker in my entire collection, it's, it's really tough to say a favorite, and that might change day by day. Like in terms of, you know, like, like value, either the pigeons, you know, I mean, obviously that's a legendary SB, something I wanted for a long time, and there's a backstory in that. I actually have a phobia of pigeons, like in real life. So, you know, the irony of the shoe always attracted me. And I just, I, I just love the simple colorway and that perfect pink on the sole. Extremely fucking rare. And the history behind them, the riots they caused. This is, this is, this is a grailed, among grails. This is a beautiful shoe. Dead stock too. Obviously the mags, in terms of, you know, the expense and the rarity of the shoe. And I love those movies when I was a little kid. But my favorite, favorite, favorite shoe in this whole room is honestly any pair of breads. The, the actual band ones are my favorite. The leather on them was just so damn good. Yeah, man, I mean, it, it changes day to day. If I had to pick one Jordan to wear for the rest of my life, it would just be the Royals, either the Royal or Bands. Um, these are the 2013s, but the 2001s are actually my favorite. I have a pair over here, they there. It was something about the shape of the 2001. I know the soles were hella thinner, but it's something about the color and just the leather and just the staying power of something that's almost 20 years old. I mean, the shoe being even older than that, but that retro um, in particular being my favorite release of them. I have received shoes from famous people, gifts that I would appreciate forever. There was an ex-girlfriend who, who did something really sweet and really nice with my album, The Beautiful and Damn, came out. She gave me the Quai 54's Friends and Families because they're split in half. And at the time, that was a really thoughtful gift. I appreciated that a lot. Ben Kicks, shout out Ben Kicks, man. He gifted me the Air Mags. That's, that's, that's a really hot gift, man. So I appreciate Ben Kicks, man, for real. I started putting this closet together. It, it actually, I, this used to be a bedroom in my house. I knocked the wall down and just had them turn this into a whole closet because basically my collection was just overflowing from the other bedrooms in the house. And I wanted to have it feel like almost like a museum, like with the, with the light strips and have them on display, like in the right way. In my current rotation, I got my slides, I got my socks, and I got another pair of socks because it's quarantine and you can't go anywhere. But if I had to pick out, hmm, if I could be leaving the house right now, like what would I go to to wear? I mean, it cost, you know, the black ones, I, I, love, I have both pairs, they're both fire. I love the glow in the dark bottoms, but the blacks were just a little less loud and more wearable with anything. Kind of remind me of the Black Cat 4s, but just with a, with a unique story to them. The OG Black Cats are actually some of my favorite shoes ever. Solar, Easy 2s. I mean, this, this honestly is one of my favorite pairs of shoes ever. I remember I wanted them so bad when they came out, couldn't afford them, and then finally being able to get my hands on pairs. So I keep a dead stock pair and then two that I go back and forth from nowhere. And then the fragment ones. There's something about the simplicity of this colorway. Similar to a royal, but different. And then the leather, the leather's hella nice and it just broke in really well. The reemergence of SBs, this is a, is a hot topic, an interesting topic among you know everybody in the culture. It's difficult because, you know, as a collector, as anybody who's followed the culture for years and years, like any subculture, you kind of like to feel like it's your own. And when you see other people wearing MF Dooms and it looks funny, you know, it can catch you off guard. On the other hand, it's like you got more people, you know, wearing SBs and bringing attention to it than there's been in a really long time. So a part of that is fire and part of that, is, it's interesting. But um, this will forever be one of my favorite pairs of shoes. I remember camping out for these when I lived in New Orleans at Humidity Skate Shop. And my girl at the time, I knew she was a rider when she camped out with me and she bought them for me. I was like, wow, that's true love. Yeah, these skunks are forever one of my favorite shoes. 
I love the little stats patch inside. And the insoles were actually really creative on these too. These Stussy cherries are forever, just one of my favorite colorways. Something about the way this brown and pink clashes, it's definitely a classic pair of shoes. But in terms of clash and colorways and, and craziness coming together to ultimately create something that's unique and beautiful, I mean, the what those are one of the most perfect examples of this. To the untrained eye, these still look beautiful. And it's like, you can't explain why you can mash up this many things and make it synergistic and, and, and harmonious and make it all work within some kind of color palette and color way. Because there's so much going on here and there's so many classic dunks they chose to incorporate in their own way. So, man, these are forever one of my favorite shoes. I mean, when Kanye did these with Louis, Again, it's like a shoe I wanted so badly when they first came out. Couldn't get my hands on them. I mean, it's, it's, it's a big, bulky, loud sneaker to wear in today's world, but it's forever a piece of history. And, you know, for a rapper to collaborate with the high-end brand like this, it was just like one of the first of its kind. You know, I mean, I'm a huge, huge, huge Kanye West fan. When he first came out with his first Nike shoe, it, in, in a way, it built on a lot of Nike's history and a lot of Jordan's history, just in terms of silhouette and style, but at the same time, his take on building on the history of Nike and Jordan and all that. So aesthetically minded and so artfully motivated, you know, to put all this attention to detail into a shoe, but then to have it just like, you know what I mean, pop and have, you know, a great silhouette behind it. So, you know, collecting and getting my hands on, you know, all six colorways of the, the first and second shoe he ever did with Nike was a big deal. These I'd probably say I wear the most, just the most wearable in terms of all the releases. But every October I like to bring these out at least once. It's an important shoe for its history, his departure from Nike, yada yada, the whole story behind it. Yeah, and these are also super wearable. The Platinums, I have one pair that I just kind of let get beat up. I think it looks even better that way. These are beautiful dead stock as well. Honestly, one of my favorite shoes in the world for all that it represents you know, and what it's done for me in my life is the classic Puma Suede. Um, I've been partners with Puma for a couple of years now and getting to work with an iconic shoe brand is a dream come true, to say the least. When I think about the doors Puma has opened for me, you know, the stuff I got to do with Nipsey, I mean, Puma's helped me buy my mom a house. You know what I mean? Puma has helped me donate you know, clothes and shoes to homeless kids in the Bay Area. And on top of that, I mean, this is an icon of a sneaker. You know, the suede, the Clyde, you know, these are timeless shoes, the Ralph Sampson. So in terms of just an everyday wearable shoe, you know, this is, this is right up there with anything for me. The Defining Moments pack, um, you know, just, just again, so two of the simplest colorways, but the accents of gold is what sets it off. I mean, this pack was, you know, my favorite of, you know, both 11s and 6s, arguably. I probably lean towards the 6 a little bit um, over the 11, just in terms of its wearability. I think the 11 is a more iconic silhouette and shoe, but in terms of wearability, I mean, it's, it gets no more classic and iconic than this kind of colorway. Just that, those accents of gold, and then it kind of reminds me of the New Orleans Saints. Obviously, New Orleans is like a second home to me. To bring it back to there is fire. Love these, but they are breaking. <laughs> All right. First pair of sneakers I will wear after the quarantine is over. It's one of my biggest heroes in my entire life. I actually wore these to his service um, with a Saint Laurent suit on. But um, Kobe, you know, had a huge impact on my life and getting to watch him every Christmas day was a part of me and my brothers, all, all of our Christmas memories, you know? So to get in there, remember Kobe, putting these on and, you know, and just and just think about him, man. I, um, I got this tatted right after he passed. You know, Kobe will forever be a legend in my eyes. And um, yeah, that's probably what I'll pick. Or when I step out of quarantine, I'm stepping out in these Kobe's. In my, I think in my seventh grade basketball team, I had a pair of these. I mean, imagine what Kobe meant to a seventh grader at that time and getting to put on his shoes. I didn't care that these were some of the most ugly designed shoes ever of all time. I cared that I felt like this guy, Kobe Bryant. Maybe I will put on these ugly shoes when I step out after quarantine, but it's all for the love and respect and, and admiration of Kobe Bryant, so rest in peace. I just wanna say thank you to Complex Closets. I hope everybody's staying safe during these crazy, unprecedented, uncertain times. 
Man, it was weird to finally do it like this, but you know what I mean, I'm glad I got to show off some of my collection to you and tell some stories about these shoes that mean a lot to me. So much love. Dylan Jarrell signing out.